the Kiki Dilemma. <laughs> well, today we're going to be looking at this massive dendrobium here and the fact that it's got hundreds of kikis, literally hundreds of kikis growing on it. We get, they're all at different phases of, or stages of growth and we'll look at how you should look after each of the different types if you're wanting to remove them from your plant because invariably when it gets like something like this it needs to be done. Also when you do have this excess of growth of kikis on your plant there's generally some sort of stress happening and it's often in the root area. It could also just be from watering at incorrect times of the year and the plants just going straight into growth phase and leaving out the flowering phase altogether. But that's another story. <laughs> Let's get to what we're looking at. We're going to look at the kikis and how to remove them or at least how to look after the different ones at the different phases of growth so that they can be removed. Welcome to The Nature Company. If this is the kind of information you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button down below and that notification bell to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. Looking at this orchid, we can notice there's kikis from these tiny little ones to medium size and anything in between to these huge, big, long ones and even big bunches of them. So we need to know how to remove these different sizes of kikis, especially if we're wanting to remove these tiny little ones. The bigger ones are easy, but also there's a few different methods you can use to remove them depending on how you're going to mount or pot them. So let's have a look at that quickly. So when dealing with these tiny little kikis, and if you don't think they're big enough to be removed from the plant yet, one of the easiest ways to do is to actually get a mount. We can just attach this whole pseudo bulb or this cane to the mount. All we'll do is we'll take our little bit of Scooby wire, find the right positioning and basically just attach that nice and firmly to the mount. This doesn't have to be a permanent mount, it can just be a temporary one just so that it helps initiate the root growth onto the mount itself. Putting a mount onto a, an orchid generally allows the orchid to push the roots towards the mount instead of if they're in the air they can often go all over the place looking for a mount or something to attach themselves onto. Whereas if you're supplying them with a mount these roots will then automatically find their way onto that mount and be in the direction that you want. By attaching these kikis to a mount you'll often find the roots develop more quickly they tend to want to root onto something. So this can just be attached like this and then hooked somewhere onto your plant to keep it up in the direction that you want it facing so that you're not changing the direction of the growth of the kiki. If you're then leaving it to hang, what you're going to be doing is changing the direction of growth and your canes are going to want to bend back up. So we just try and keep it at the right direction that we want the kiki to keep growing in. That's one of the easiest ways it's attached to the mother plant, it's still being fed through the mother plant so it's not going to lose out on any nutrition or anything, it's not going to be put backwards, in fact it's probably going to grow faster now that it's got a mount that's going to probably hold a little bit extra moisture around it and cause those roots to grow faster. And then when you're ready all you do is you can then either remove the mount from the kiki when it's big enough or you can just cut off the pseudobulb or the cane at any point along the stem that you find most comfortable with or that will suit the mount that you're on. With some of these larger kikis that do have enough root volume on them, even if they're only a single cane, these still can be removed quite easily. What you want to do is generally you want to put your fingers to either side of the the kiki and just gently push it one way and then back again 
just in a little bit of a seesaw motion. Give it a little bit of a twist around and a twist in the other direction. And a little bit of a pull and your kiki will come off clean. If you're worried about the twisting and the running and the twisting and the pulling, what you can do is you can go in carefully with a set of long nosed secateurs. Just get into right at the gap there and give a little snip. We're not cutting all the way through, we're just doing a little snip so the kiki comes loose like that. And then we can gently pull it, go back in when it's a little bit more loose and give a snip again in the underneath. So those are, those are two of the easiest ways to remove the kikis. Another way that's easy to be done is especially if you're going to be mounting it onto a tree directly from taking your kikis off. This way it will give it a little bit of extra energy and help it survive longer without any attention. So what we can do is we can go to our cane. Whoopsie, we have a little flower bud going there. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the cane just above the flower spike because we don't want to stop that from flowering. And we have the kiki attached to a section of the original pseudobulb or the cane. This we're just going to need to seal the bottom of just to stop that moisture from evaporating out of the cane to help this feed the kiki for longer. We see we have a nice set of roots here already and this can now then be either directly mounted onto a mount or a tree and it gives you something nice and easy to tie onto. That's one of the reasons that in certain cases I like to leave parts of those old canes onto my plants to make it easier. To be able to mount. So there again, all we're doing is taking our wire, wrapping it around, always best to be sure to measure your wire first, don't do this. Uh, landing up with a short piece. So rather measure the length you need first before you just go out. There we go. Then we can just mount that on like that and twisting the wires to get a tight. Yeah, we don't have to worry that we squeeze into the, the old pseudobulb because it's not actually going to damage the kiki itself anyway. It just helps give you a nice tight effect so that your plant isn't going to fall off easily. So you don't have to worry about constricting the old cane. With treating this cut off piece here, what we're going to be doing is just some of our trusty cinnamon that we're then going to dab onto the base and that's all. That's enough to seal it, to stop any infections from getting in and to allow this to grow healthily. You can also use a little bit of candle wax if you want to just to seal off that end and you don't have to use any of those other fancy products. So also here with, with these kikis, where that little tear has happened. All we want to do is get in there and dab that with a little bit of cinnamon. It will probably be easier with a Q-tip because we don't really want to get too much of the cinnamon onto the roots themselves as it can help desiccate the roots but that will just stop any infection 
from getting in there. So also remember keeping sanitized equipment all the time. You can go through and check through your plant. For instance, this one, we've noticed the old pseudobulb has already died off. The kikis have formed and this part of the cane is still alive. So this we just need to cut back slightly. It's all dry, there's nothing to worry about. So if you want to, you can cut all the way back to fresh tissue and then seal it. Or if this is dried and stopped dying back, if there's no infection, there's no bacterial rot or fungi, then you just leave a little bit of a dry end there and that will seal off the end for you. So, and pieces like this are then ready for you to either go attached directly to a mount or with this extended piece of pseudobulb or cane that's at the bottom, it helps give more stability if you're potting it in a pot because then you can pot it to that point and giving you that extra stability for the length that's above it and something to tie onto, onto a stake. So there's all sorts of added advantages to leaving the cane on. Also, if you have long canes with several kikis on it and the cane already looks like it's starting to desiccate a bit, you just go in, cut it back into your the depth of your plant so you have a nice long set like this. Also, you can either go attach this directly to your trees, giving you nice areas to attach without causing any damage to the kikis. You can also lay this down on top of a pot or on a, a rooting bed to get each of these to root nicely individually and then you can divide them up into sections or you can divide it up into sections and then lay them onto those, those rooting beds. So many options. But one of the things you do need to be careful of when removing a kiki, we can see that direction that it's been growing in. It's coming out of the node and been growing up and outwards. So one of the easiest ways for people to think to remove it is just by pulling down on it. This is not what you want to do because as you pull down on it, you pull a strip out of the pseudobulb and that's going to see, look, and you've damaged the pseudobulb now. It's going to allow for infection to come in. If you don't need the pseudobulb, yes, it's all right. And then you can go back and trim it. You want to ensure that you trim that all the way off like that and then treat this with your cinnamon. So don't be afraid of removing your kikis. The plant is producing them for a reason because it wants to self-propagate itself. And especially with dendrobiums, these kikis can be incredibly hardy. Often I like to do the removal of kikis or towards the end of winter so that in spring they can immediately start that new growth phase. I don't necessarily want to push those parts of the plant that have the kikis on into flowering because it will slow down on the growth phase of those kikis. If I can get them off now at the end of towards the end of winter so that when spring is ready they've already settled down into the environment that they're in then they can immediately start their growth burst and those roots will set in quickly. And often when removing these kikis I don't water or feed them until spring starts. I want to see those nice little green root tips happening before I'll actually start providing any extra water or feed to those kikis. Unless of course you see them really starting to desiccate and dry out, then you do want to give them that extra water. But invariably, dendrobiums from the areas they're in, they're used to having that dry winter period and, and that's what the pseudobulbs are for is for storing all that energy for them to start regrowing in spring. So the reason this huge specimen of Dendrobium fimbriatum oculatum started throwing all these kikis, I don't actually have to go in to look. 
I can tell just by seeing the plant in general, these new growth canes should be way bigger. There should be a lot more leaf volume, even though it is in the winter, and the canes should be a lot thicker and bigger. The plant has slowly got smaller, so I know the media is done for. I haven't repotted this in about three or five years, something as long as that is one of the reasons that I plant them in these big pots is to allow for these big specimens to grow. So if you're interested in me showing you how I repot this specific orchid, drop a comment below and we'll do that video for you too. But other than that, I'm going to have so much fun putting all of these out in the garden, tying them to my trees and having a magnificent show in a couple of years. With orchids, sometimes when you see something that looks like a negative, it actually can be a positive. And don't be afraid of getting into orchids and do what they ask you to do because they'll reward you a million times over. We have extra content in the Buy Me A Coffee link down below. Thank you for watching. If you find any of this information helpful, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below, and that notification bell, bing bong, to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. Help us grow as we help your orchids grow.